Remember our baptism. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sins so that we can comfort others in their sins with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. When we are baptized in Christ Jesus, we are baptized into his death. We are buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will surely be raised from the death, from the death like him. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us now pray. O oh God of grace and glory, remember before you today, Zach. We thank you for giving Zach to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage of our earth. In your boundless compassion, console us and mourn. Give us your aid so that we may see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of your Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until, by your call, we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Zach is a, my brother. He is also a son, uncle, partner, and friend. Broken chain. We little knew that morning that God was going to call your name. In life, we loved you dearly. In death, we did the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. You did not go alone. So with you, the day God called you home. You left us peaceful memories. Your love is still our guide, and though we cannot see you, you're always at our side. Our family chain is broken, and nothing seems the same. But as God calls us one by one, one, the chain will ache again. I've never seen a fat man's face light up with such a smile and so much excitement after finding a man. May you rest in peace, brother, and keep on pinpointing agates from heaven. Thank you for showing us the simple joys of life, Zach. We love you.
As many of you know, I am Murphy, Zach's cousin, but I would consider us brothers. Zach has been a big part of my life, alongside my dad, my uncle Jerry. <laughs> we were inseparable. I never thought I'd be staying here today, giving this heart wrenching speech, but being one of the closest people to him. I know Zach wanted me to do this. I always think of him as my big brother in their head. And I'll always be his little brother. Some of the some of the best memories in my life were with him. He taught me many good things in life. A very good memory that we both loved was when we went hunting with our great friend Tom Larry. One morning about four a.m. Zach and Tom and I were living. On our way out to the spot, they saved the canoe and took a quick path in the lake. Thankfully, I was in I was in a different canoe than them two had to enjoy the early morning swim I sat back and laughed. Out of all the moments I have with them, I love your school really trips with their dad. Dad's one of our favorites is when me and him flew out to Wyoming and beat our heads for red school. We were both so excited. When we were on the boat, we were going to the lake. I asked him what he wanted to do with his life, and he said he wanted to work with me until we were ready to retire. We had plans to live our lives side by side. Zach helped me through so much the last 20 years of my life, and I'm so thankful every second I got to spend with him with the opportunities. While Zach was away, he wrote me a note about how much he loved me, and the note he mentioned he wanted me to be better than he was. But I know no one will ever be as amazing as my brother was. As hard as this is, I know Zach would want the best for us, just like we did for him. I will always cherish the memories we made together, and I will miss him. My big brother, I thought we used to be from the little cousin. <laughs> Zach and I's story started when he was 16 and I was 15 years old. We had the same interests, which made us grow together, creating an inseparable bond. Due to having the same hobbies, we did everything together. Exploring and trying new, exciting things were at the top of our to-do list. We decided to go skydiving multiple times. Each time, he would always ask if he could do flips and tricks out of the airplane. He was fearless. He brightened up my life and pushed me to become a better person. He taught me to be more laid back, operate heavy machinery, and live life to the fullest. He always told me I was his shooting star. Zach was lucky in many ways. He would always find four-leaf clovers, be the only one to see the shooting star in the early morning months, and consistently find the best baggots. The last hunting memory I have with Zach sums up his personality. We were hunting on the river in Wisconsin, and it was just Zach and I. We were setting up decoys and Zach fell in and got soaked. He calmly went over to the mud boat and took his clothes off to get them dried on the motor. Zach never got upset about being cold and wet. He just wanted to keep hunting. Golden eyes were rushing past our hideout. The only time he would get distraught was if I was not shooting. Zach always wanted the best for me and to gain the confidence in doing things I think that I could not do. Zach always told me, you will miss 100% of the shots you do not take. Zach was my life partner. We became house married when we bought an anchorage together in the spring of 2019. Zach put his heart and soul into our farm to make it ours. Zach would find items and plants on the job to add special touches around the house, which displayed he was always thinking of me. I was fortunate to find my soulmate. I never would have thought our time together would be this short. We planned our life out together forever. I hope from this tragic loss, we all learn that life is short, and if you love someone, you should spend time with them. Even though he is not physically with us here, he is, in our, he is in spirit in our hearts. We just need to keep him alive by telling his stories and remembering him. Zach was such a wonderful person who has touched so many lives. I love you, Zach, to the point of that. You're one and only.
at the age of eight, Zach was a Boy Scout, and they raised money through popcorn sales. He wanted them to sell the most popcorn to all some of the other kids, and he did. And I spent at least a week with him delivering the popcorn. It took forever. As he grew, he had to think for wheels. Zach started off with his red bike. He would set jumps and move them further apart. And I really appreciate it. He graduated in four years, dirt bikes, snow wheels, rod rockets. Now it was four plus day. Zach loved riding wheelies on everything he could to push the limit when it came to speed and danger. Zach was rolling on the edge, but he was always in control and never injured himself, injured himself during the stunts he had. And Zach found Rachel, they were in several. He loved her so much, like two peas in a pod. They did everything together. They never left each other's side. I always looked, them, looked at them as a match made them. Zach had a soft heart. He had the ability to look at things differently. He would stop and have snow in the roses. He would look for agates and he would look through some of the demolition jobs to bring things home to the love of his life, Rachel. His best find was a swing set, which he rebuilt and put new chains in the chairs and he put it down on the beach by the lake next to their house. Zach was always good at surprising me with a new set of wheels. I came home from Sturgis one year, and there was a black Mustang while sitting in a garage. I was in shock. I knew there'd be trouble around the corner. Zach and Rudy's cousin would drag race two Ford Mustangs on the highway which now I realized created a lot of those black marks between Darcy's house and mine. It didn't go quite fast enough. So he pulled her in the shed and he had a bolt on a turbo to make it go faster. I just shook my head. Oh, I can sit back and laugh. Zach always loved drifting on his cars, no matter what season. One time, his friends from the reservation invited him to drift at Grand International Speedway. He took his Mustang and tried to compete. He had a blast, and that's one of his fondest memories. I wish he would have took the time. I remember when we were on a group trip snowmaking in Wyoming. We did what we call pine marking to see who could put the highest mark on the side of the mountain. <coughs> Us old guys would do our best to keep up, but Zach would sit back and giggle because he could beat us every time. He was a fast learner with equipment. He paid attention to all the things that they taught him. And 
tidak memiliki alat alat Zach would start a conversation, strike up laughter with all the people that we work for. He definitely had a gentle, gentle touch to I. Zach touched the hearts of every one of them. I was looking forward to him to take over the business of the baby. I think of all the time we spent together doing all the things that we love to do. I'm going to miss you doing this. Love Dan. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff may comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. That song is is meant for us in life. And it seems appropriate to the talk set of Tapakores. And it is a place that we go as we go rest by the still waters. And we get renewed at the still waters. And that is why this was written. It's by King David who needed his own escape. And this is telling us that God goes with us in our darkest moments and will get us through our whole life long. Our gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of John. And I actually put down the whole chapter because portions of it are important to this message I want to give today. So I will just summarize and not give you the whole chapter. Now, there was a certain man who was ill, Lazarus of Bethany. The village of Mary and sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. And so the sisters sent a message to Jesus and said, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus said, heard this, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is to God's glory. So accordingly, John loved Martha and her sister Lazarus, and after hearing about Lazarus, he stayed away for another two days. And then he took some time, and finally he got to Bethany. He arrived and found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, and he came Well, in that time of those days, there were many who would come to be with Mary and Martha to console them about their brother. 
And when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to him and she said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. And Jesus said, your brother will rise again. And Martha said, I know that. I know he will at the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes will never die. Do you believe this? He asked. And she said, yes, I believe this. Well, then we had Mary come to Jesus and said the same thing. Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would never have died. And Jesus saw her weeping. And the Jews who were with her were weeping also. And he was greatly disturbed by this. And he was moved. Where have you laid him? They asked. He asked. And they said, Come and see. And then he began to weep. And the Jews said, Oh, how is it that he loves him so? Could he not have saved him? Well, Jesus went to the tomb and asked that the stone be rolled away. And so they did. They moved the stone, and then he cried out, Lazarus, come out. And the man came out, his hands and feet bound. And Jesus said, Unbind him and let him out. Here ends our way. Well, I would take this moment to read the obituary of the life story that, the, um, that Alexander had put together. And it really, really lifts him up, as did the four of you. On March 3rd, 1994, Jerry and Vicki celebrated the birth of their, their son, Zachary Dean, with Dot Vale. Zach was an active boy and loved growing up with his three older siblings, Jenny, Darcy, and Kyle. From the time he was a baby, he was taken along with his siblings and followed in their footsteps whenever he could. They spent a lot of time enjoying the outdoors. Zach tucked under the ball of the boat to enjoy the trips down the river. They enjoyed snowmobiling, riding four wheelers, taking family trips around the United States. And eventually Jerry and Vicki went their separate ways, but they always remained dedicated to their royal son. Jerry and Zach had a very special relationship that only dad and son can have. It took countless trips to snowmobiling in Michigan and out west. His last and most cherished snowmobiling trip was in Canada, and Zach ultimately found his calling when he began working for Jerry's company five years ago. And Zach was a natural when it came to operate big machine. He was talented and a hard worker, and he was promoted to vice president, planned to take the business. His mom, Vicki, was a nurturer. Older kids knew that Zach was the baby of the family, and his mother had that special bond. She loved her baby boy, and he would call her mom. And there was a period of time when it was just Vicki and Zach after the older kids moved out, and she cherished those moments, the one on one moments of being together, watching the land of her time over and over again. They never slowed down, continued to travel and experiencing life together. Vicki was proud of Zach. And then there was the age gap between Zach and the older siblings. They loved their little brother they called Zachy. It was common to chase Zach around the house and take a little while they would take a break from their busy lives as older siblings. And Zach looked, out to his, looked up to his siblings and clearly learned from them. It's easy to pick up their own unique strengths that Zach exhibited. He idolized his sister Darcy for being a Chinook helicopter pilot. He also learned fishing, agate hunting, and his calm demeanor was his sister, Darcy. Fearlessness and a love for anything with wheels and power were powerful strengths given from his brother, Kyle. Zach gained a love for adventure, taking trips to experience the world and living life to the fullest from his sister, Jen. His stepdad, Dale, hot, gassed, brought him hunting. Buck loved experiencing the outdoors with Zach and was amazed by his stepson's ability to live life. 
There was a time when Doc had to argue with the store to replace the variants on Zach's skateboard that had been ruined in a short amount of time. The store had never seen a person go through variants so quick. But that's how Zach went. As a teenager, Zach began working at Double and Stable in Lakeville, and that's where he met the one of his wife, Rachel. From the moment they met, they knew they had something special. They had the same interests and hobbies, which led them to do everything together. In their free time, Zach, Rachel, and their beautiful black lab, Bella, enjoyed boat fishing, ice fishing, four wheeling, surfing, boating, hunting, exploring, and egg hunting. And one of Zach's happiest moments, hunting, hunting, was when he went to Pintail. Zach was a good provider and so proud of the beautiful 28 pop. 28 property he shared with Rachel. It was as it had his own private lake, and they were planning to build their dream. While on the job, Zach had a knack for taking old discarded items and giving them a new life. He would find special items and plants for Rachel, which added a special touch to the property. They loved their love continued to grow for the past 11 years. They had built a beautiful life together. Zach was also a bit of a motorhead and loved speed. He enjoyed snowmobiling for really riding this crotch rocket. It was said he was always happy when he had a pair of handlebars in his hands. He quickly went from a regular old bicycle to a mini bike to a dirt bike to a crotch rocket. And I don't know how I feel about that as a mother. <laughs> but soon enough, he was enjoying life riding down the highway at full speed. Zach always lived his life at 100 miles per hour. There was a bit of an adrenaline junkie, which caused him a seven rolling bolt in eight years. And then there are many friends and family in Zach's life. He shared his love of cars, bowling, or wheeling with friends. A close bond was explored with his uncle Darcy and cousin Bowie. And Zach became the cool uncle to his five nephews. A family gathers who would tickle them and similar to his older siblings would chase them around. His nephews would watch and off and Zach would invite them to watch and operate equipment. There were difficulties for Zach's life. He suffered a heart attack when he was 23. On March 3rd, 2021, Zach died much too soon on his 27th birthday. His family takes comfort knowing that he's at peace and that his legacy will live on in their hearts forever. All of our hearts. Zach survived by his, his father Jerry, his mom Vicky, my partner Rachel, Jenny, and Ben, and Darcy, Kyle, nephews Ben, Luke, Jack, Odin, Leaf, grandfather Jerry's, stepbrothers and sisters Gavin, Tori, Trisha, Edwin, and his beloved dog, well, Ella, including all the loving relatives and dear friends. And he is greeted in heaven by his uncle Todd and grandparents, Mary Ann and Twice. A beautiful and very rich life. Very full. And it was an honor for me to sit with you just for a short amount of time last Saturday. Around the same time. I'm sitting in here in the sanctuary and the chairs weren't there. Underneath you see is a labyrinth. And it was a very sacred space as we came together to talk about that. Of course, we did the details of the service, but there were stories, just like the stories that were shared in his life story and the ones that you shared. But what's always missing when you have a written word is you miss the emotion of it. When you were telling about Zach, it was very clear how much you had been drawn back to him by who he was. And each of you felt very special because of his attention he gave you. And you laughed at his taking everything to the highest level, with the greatest intensity. And you, you looked with comfort, knowing that he loved life and lived it. But I also noticed that you drew quiet when you reflected on his love of nature and his sense of connectedness to the outdoors. But that was the place where he experienced God, being out in the woods, on the water, 
as the earth was vacant. He was engaged with each one of you and who you were as you each are and what you meant to him. He loved you all in your unique ways and with his own unique way. And I think he did because of how you loved him with unconditional love. Yes, the gospel reading that I did just a bit ago from John is one that was intentional. It's one that we hear at Lent, and we are in the season of Lent. And we're here because this is coming to the end of Jesus' life. But it's also read because it's about resurrection, about raising Lazarus from the dead, but also about Jesus, who will soon die. And this is a very full story, but in this story, I think we can be consoled. Because we have so much that we're experiencing right now. We hear it in this story too. We hear in this story confusion of why Jesus isn't here. We hear sadness because Lazarus has died. We also find Lazarus was a good friend of Jesus, and Mary and Martha were in this, this book of John earlier. But we don't know why that he loves them so much, but we know they do. He does. So we have to wonder why does Jesus stay away for a few days? Why not save his family friend from agony? I would imagine as Jesus was away, what we would hear from the people who were waiting Where are you, Jesus? What is taking you so long? Don't you know what's happening? Jesus was the hope. And then there is the, after Jesus' death and Mary and Martha's reaction, if you had been here, this wouldn't have happened. Why did you save him, they asked. Why did this happen? And I think these are the questions that we have probably had ourselves in this time. Why suffering? Why do we suffer? Why? Why do we come to the Lord? I am sure you've all lifted this up. Recent days, perhaps previous months. Why? Well, in this story, Jesus coming quickly, the answer is, is not really crystal clear. He doesn't say to the crowd, I didn't come because I wanted you to see that I am God. I wanted you to see that death will not have a hold on you. He didn't say that directly. That life is given after death. He didn't say that. He said it to Martha. He said, I'm the resurrection of life. And that's all good. But it's only Martha that hears this, not the crowd. So all of them are still left wondering. But then what do we see? We see a God, we see Jesus crying. Crying. Along with all who are there, all those who lost loved ones. Crying. Jesus is moved. In Christ, at this moment, in as human as he is, he's grieving for the one who died. He's feeling sad for all those who are sad. And he wants those who are so sad to know that God is there, that God will provide. So Jesus goes on to raise Lazarus from the dead, and hopes and prayers are answered. Lazarus lives. I don't think this is the point of the story. I think the point of hearing this story is to know that God listens and hears you. Hears you. Hears how sad you are and how disappointed you are and angry. This story is told so that we can know that, that we can be angry. And I believe that's what you need to hear is that God hears you and is okay with whatever you're feeling. 
And also in this story, we hear of Jesus being sad and disappointed and angry too. Because I don't really believe this is what God wanted for Zach. I don't. I believe that God wants us to have abundant lives. So I think God may just be as disappointed as we should. But then in the story, we hear about resurrection. And maybe we don't get to have Zach come back. We don't, but we will have resurrection while we're here. We will. Light will come to you. It will come to you. There will be a new day. Hope will come. It will. And the promise of resurrection comes also after our death because of Jesus Christ. And that is for that. We are in the season of Lent and we are moving towards the cross. This is when Jesus will too die, suffer and die. That's the story we cling to. But in death, in Jesus' death, and in his resurrection on Easter, we get to be raised as well. That is what it is for Zach. He is now raised with all the saints. Uncle Todd and his grandparents, Mary Ann and Dwayne and Carmen. He is with those who love him. And he is at peace. And he is whole. So as we leave today, please continue to share your stories and hold each other up. Laugh and cry and be angry. And what else I loved about the story is that Mary and Martha were not alone. That people surrounded them in their grief. That they held them dumb up as they grieved and as they themselves were grieving. And grief is always best done after others. So in the moments that come to you in these coming days and weeks, you will experience Zach. You'll hear the sound of returning peace, the honkers that go over your house, the resting of Bella at your feet. The early sounds of morning, the getting ready of equipment, digging, flying, hunting, the sounds of skates on ice, seen and added. All of these are reminders of Zach, who is with you. And so is God. Almighty God and Holy Baptism, you have knit your people together in one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give your whole church your might and your peace. God of mercy. Give courage and faith to all who mourn, and assure a certain hope in your loving care, that casting all their sorrows on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy. And help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in our ancestors, the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of life everlasting. God of mercy, the God of all grace, we give you thanks that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us for your love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Together in love, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Let us commend Zach to the mercy of God, our Savior and Redeemer. Into your hands, our merciful Savior, we commend your servant Zach. 
Acknowledge me how they beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sin of your own redeemed. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious comfort of saints and light. This blessing from God. We are surrounded by a great crowd of witnesses. May you find strength and courage in their presence. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. can go on up now.